Uh, I want to show you guys how to cut and buff, uh, color sand, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's a lot of different names for it uh, that people use and a lot of different ways people do it. But I want to show you the way I've been doing it. And uh, it can really make, you know, if, you're, if your paint doesn't come out so great and you got little dirt nibs and everything, like I'm going to do this door right here uh, for the purposes of this video here. So this, this door, it's got little dirt nibs all in it, um, little dirt nibs here and a dirt nib here. And there's actually a run right here. So I'm going to show you how to get all that out. And it's going to look like the, the hood, the hood. I spent a lot of time on because the hood is going to be kind of a, the focal point of the car. You know, that's how pretty much it is. When you go up to a car, you look at the hood. So the hood looks like literally amazing. So I'm super happy the way that came out. I don't know if it's gonna come through on video, but it looks really good. Okay, so I got this stuff out. Uh, it's all right here. Uh, this I bought maybe five, six years ago to do another car that I had. Um, I had it painted and then they just gave me the car with a bunch of orange peel and I did all the research and this is what I came up with. The 3M, okay, I'm sad. 3M Perfect It kit, okay, so it comes with all the, the, uh, the main thing uh, it comes with is these Trizac discs, okay? These are really good. If you, uh, have, if, you, if you ever cut and buffed a car or color sanded it and used like uh, just straight sandpaper, 2000 grit, and you're just sanding it like normal, like you would block it or whatever, uh, you get so many little lines and so many little scratches, okay? When you hook this to an orbital, okay, it comes out so smooth and it comes out very uniform. You don't see scratches. Like I said, uh, the hood, it, it, it really cuts down on compounding time. Okay, because I don't know if you can tell or not, but like there is no swirls whatsoever or scratches or anything. The, the Trizac, the way it, it just vibrates and moves and the way, it, the way it is, it just, it cuts it real nice and you don't have to compound as much. So, um, basically what you do is you get yourself uh, the Trizac. Uh, you get, um, I, have, I have two different orbitals. I have an electric one, this old school like uh, Firestorm orbital sander. And you have to use this, uh, this foam backing plate, uh, pad, foam backing pad. Okay, and then you get your orbital. Uh, hard to do this with uh, one hand, but uh, so you got your orbital sander. This is just a basic Harbor Freight orbital little uh, sander. I, I attach some uh, Velcro to it because this one is uh, normally used for the sticky sandpaper that you would just stick to it, but I converted it to take to accept the uh, hook and loop. So. You pretty much just stick this on there, okay? And then, so you pretty much just stick this on, okay, the, the foam pad. And I'll try to put like links in the description of where I got this stuff. It's all on Amazon. Just look up uh, 3M Trizact uh, and all this stuff comes up. You can buy the discs, you can buy the, uh, the pads, which I'll, I'll go through in a second. Uh, so, so then you would put this, you know, on there and um, that's how you're gonna sand it, okay? So you're gonna go and just basically sand it and I'll show you guys what type of, what it's gonna look like and what you're looking for as you're sanding, okay? You're looking for like a, just a uniform dead flat finish. You don't want any, you'll see the orange peel because it'll look like little dark spots. Um, and then once you get to that point, uh, there's different, compounds you use okay so this would be the first step this is what I use um, if you if you read it it says that it takes out uh, 1200 scratches so that's 1500 that those Trizac discs are third are 1500 so this can take all the way down to uh, like 1300 so this is the first step and you have to use the white pad for it okay this is the uh, pad you use the 05 seven two three that's the first step okay so it takes a 
I'm just going to give you guys a little overview before we do it. Uh, it takes a few times to get it to uh, look, you know, you can, you can get it almost looking like perfect with just the first step. Okay, you can like if you, if you compound it maybe two three times, and um, wipe it down with clean uh, uh, microfiber towels, you can get it to look really good. Okay, so once you get it to look really really good, that's when you move on. You don't try don't try and move on to the next step until you get it looking like really good, almost to where you're like, wow, that's that looks just how I want it to look. You know, shiny and perfect. Uh, you don't move on until then and. That's very, very important, okay? So then uh, you move on to uh, the darker disc, which is the um, 05725, and the second step, okay, number two. So I, th this actually, <clears throat> this compound here actually didn't come with it, uh, I or because I use, that's what I use the most. You use, you're gonna use the step one, you're gonna use that the most. So. Uh, I had to order extra. It's the same. It's the same stuff. It's just a different bottle. But um, yeah. And then the, this is step two. Okay. Like I said, you use step two with the the uh, dark gray, black, whatever you call it, uh, foam pad. <clears throat> and then when you're done with that, you're gonna go to the last step. Now <clears throat> you don't really have to do the, the last step. The last step is actually somewhat of a pain. That's uh, this right here. Ultra fine machine polish. And that's with your blue disc, okay, your, your blue polishing pad, 05733. Okay, so that's a little bit of a pain. Uh, you can get it to look really good just in two steps. Uh, if you want to go that extra mile and do number three, that's fine, but I actually don't. Uh, the third, the, what I do for the third step is actually a wax. So the wax will actually help protect it and all that, and you can just use like whatever. <clears throat> I use this Meguiar's. Uh, cleaner wax it's just a pretty basic stuff and it puts a nice little film on it and it'll protect your uh, your paint and fill in any other like minute whatever you got going on any little scratches it'll fill it in so anyway let me put you guys on a little tripod and I'll show you how uh, we I'm, I'm just gonna do a small area I'm only gonna do a small part because I don't want to um, spend the time to do the entire door and it just you know it's easier if I show you guys to do I'll just do this bottom section right here okay and um, yeah we'll go from there I'll just you know show you guys what I do and just stop here and there and then explain what I'm doing so let's get to work Okay, so you can do this either wet or dry. Uh, I've tried it both ways and uh, I think that dry maybe lets the pad last a little longer. I'm not 100% sure of that, it uh, just depends. Uh, you could do it either way. You can spray a little water on it and, and actually do it wet, but uh, it does work dry too, it works really good. Uh, okay, so this is the first step. I just did this for about, I don't know, three seconds, okay? And you can see all of the little orange peel in there so that's what it's going to look like when you first start okay so let me do it for another maybe i don't know 30 seconds and let's see if we can get it to look flat okay so that's what you're basically looking for and make sure that you know you get yourself a nice clean microfiber and get all the dust off so what you don't want is you don't want a chunk of something in the pad that's going to like make a curly cue in your in your paint that's that's not good you definitely don't want that So that was another maybe 15 seconds and you can start to see it already. You see it starting to get flat compared to over here. So you're looking for that. You're looking for it to get super flat. Okay. So you don't have to worry about going through the clear, going through the clear coat to the paint until you start seeing this flat. Okay. If you see it still like this, 
you're nowhere near the paint. You don't have to worry. You're, you can keep going. Uh, and, and you'll know it right away too because you'll see like black dust coming off instead of the clear, this clear like dust stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going and um, let's see if I can get this whole, I'll put you on a little time lapse. I'll try to get this whole panel nice and flat and uh, we'll come back and start step two. Okay, so I just paused right there just to kind of show you guys what I'm doing. And um, so <clears throat> I was doing it dry, which um, it was working really well. And uh, I just think that, um, like I said before, you could do it either way. You can do it with dry or with a little bit of water. Uh, and I was running into a little issue. There's quite a few dirt nibs down here. Uh, that's so what was happening was is the dirt nibs were, were breaking off and getting in the, uh, the pad and causing some little like curly cues okay so you don't want that I, I don't know if there was one over, like one over here it started doing this so <clears throat> I, I the, with the water it kind of doesn't do that as bad okay the uh, you don't get those little uh, break offs and curly cues as bad if you use water now when you do the water <clears throat> you don't want to use very much so I got this little spray bottle here from automotive touch-up and it you just need a little bit okay you, if you over do the water, the, uh, if you overdo the water, it'll uh, start to like hydroplane and you won't be cutting anything, okay? So you just kinda wanna like, just mist it on there and then uh, mist it on your... Okay, so <clears throat> like I was saying, I forgot where I was because I had to go do something else really quickly, uh, but you can do, like I said, you can use the, uh, the water um, and kind of get a little slurry going and you don't like I said you don't want to use too much water it'll hydroplane but uh, anyway so this is where we're at uh, you can see uh, the difference okay you can see where this looks more uniform than down here you see the difference so you're looking for this not that so we got to keep going until we get the whole panel to look like this and you know like down in here too the only thing is you want to be careful of the edges so I don't know if you, if you can see it or not, it's kind of hard to see, but for whatever reason, when you're painting the edges of anything, they kind of, towards the edge, it goes up, okay? For whatever reason, like, you know, when you're, I guess when you're spraying, the edges collect more paint. So it's a little bit of a raised spot. So there, it's easy to burn through that. So you kind of want to get close to that, but not go and, you know, you don't want to take your, your sander and go off the edge like this, okay? Because you, you can burn right through that really easily if you're off the edge like this. You know, if you got your, your um, sander off like that. So I like to just come in and just work it like that, close, okay? Not, not go off the edge. So, okay, so this is pretty much how you want it to look. See how it's just like really dead flat? <clears throat> And there's a couple spots, like really deep holes. Well, I mean, I wouldn't call them really deep holes, but uh, there's, there's a few little tiny spots there. I just don't want to go any further. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of leave them. It's not that big of a deal if you have a couple here and there. Uh, once you buff it out, you, you will not see it. Uh, if you have a really deep one, <clears throat> like a really deep pit, uh, this would be the time where you could, like, if you wanted to, you could fill it in with a little bit of clear coat, you know, mix up some clear coat or get some just regular old clear coat, you know, in, in the bottle that you get at the auto parts store and you just put a dab in there, let that dry and then you come back and you, <clears throat> you sand again with your uh, 1500, okay, and then till that's flat. So you can do that and you can just get it as perfect as you want. Um, so, but I'm not worried about it because honestly, this is the bottom half of the door and those little tiny little pins here and there, it's not that big of a deal to me. And you're never actually gonna see that. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be kind of out of the way, so. But anyway, uh, yeah, and I didn't get, I can't get too close to the edge. So you're gonna see a little bit of orange peel up in here. 
Uh, I just don't want to burn into this, uh, this molding here. So uh, I got pretty close to the edge here, but left a little tiny bit of orange peel. Now, like, don't be too concerned about that. It's not that big of a deal because just a little tiny bit of orange peel, that's going to buff right out and it'll blend in and you really won't even see it. Okay. Like I, I on the, uh, on the hood, I did the same thing. Okay. I got close to the corners but, or the edges, but not all the way to the edge. I left a little tiny bit of orange peel and I, you can't even see it. If you get really, really close, you can kind of see it, but I kept it safe and I didn't burn through anywhere. Uh, so I can live with that. I can live with that tiny bit of orange peel. So anyway, uh, rambling a lot. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our uh, buffer, just the regular old, this is like a Harbor Freight high-speed buffer. Um, nothing too fancy, just your regular old um, variable speed. Variable speed's important, you want that. Okay, so get yourself a brand new uh, microfiber and don't ever let it touch the ground. Don't ever put it on your table. Uh, don't ever set it anywhere. What I like to do is when I'm doing this is I take it when I'm not using it and I stick it in my back pocket. Like just stick it back there so that it doesn't touch the ground, touch the table, touch nothing. Because the slightest little thing that you get on that microfiber and you wipe onto it, you could put a scratch in it. Like it's, it's really frustrating to see that when you get it looking really good and you wipe it with your microfiber and it just scratches the heck out of it. So make sure you keep that clean. Okay, so we got this, um, this pad on and uh, what you wanna do is you wanna moisten it just a little bit, okay? Put just a little bit of, of this spray on it. And I use uh, distilled water. Okay, I don't know how important that is, but I don't know if you ever noticed, like if you ever wash your car with uh, like bad water, like bad city water, and it leaves spots and minerals and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't think that's a good thing when you're you, you know trying to buff it out. So distilled water, get it just a little bit, little bit wet, not too wet. And um, we'll wipe this down one last time. Just to make sure there's nothing on it, okay? And then another thing I like to do is make sure that, you know, you, you really can't do it on a car. I'm going into a lot of detail here, sorry guys, but uh, I think some of these things are important. Uh, you can't really do it on a car, but make sure that when you're buffing, you wanna get your piece like off the, off the edge of the table. So this way when your buffer is coming down, you don't hit the table because then it's gonna hit the table and pick up whatever's on the table and then just start whipping it into your, your paint. So anyway, uh, okay. So you, you basically, you're gonna pour, we're gonna do about, we're gonna do this in three sections, okay? Don't try to do the whole, a whole entire panel at once, just do it in sections. Okay, so we're gonna do about that much. Put you guys back on the tripod here. And uh, put it, you pretty much want on your lowest setting. Whatever your, whatever your lowest setting is, leave it there. And uh, kind of rub it in first. Don't just start it off without rubbing it in first. Okay, once you get that kind of spread out like that, then you can start it up. Um, this is around like 1200 RPMs and um, just light pressure, not too heavy. Okay, so what I like to do, I don't know if other people do this or not, I don't know if you're supposed to do it or not, but what I like to do is I stop before it starts to dry. Um, I think that's uh, not good to try to pick it back up with the same pad uh, because you're gonna end up like, I don't know, it kind of burns it. But, so I let that, I'm gonna let that dry 
and wipe it off with a microfiber. So what I can do now is while this is drying, I can go down at this end <clears throat> and we can start on this end here. Okay, do the same thing. A little bit more water. Do same, pretty much the same amount. Wipe it in. So now we're gonna move back to here where we already comp compounded and it's dry. And we're going to start wiping it off. Should come off like a nice little powder. And it's still not going to look good, okay? That's only the first step. I'm going to probably compound this three times, okay? So in order to get it to where you want for the uh, final step there, you want to get this, I would say, at least three times. Uh, so, But you can tell the difference it makes already, okay? From there, you know, to here, obviously. So this is just the first step, okay? So we're gonna keep going and um, I'll let this one dry, wipe this off, and then we'll do the center, and then I'm just gonna repeat it, do the same thing three more times. And uh, when we come back, um, I won't show it, but when I come back, you're gonna see the difference of what it looks like at that point. And then we'll move on to the second step. So let me get to work and uh, we'll come back when I got that, the three steps done. Okay, okay so I wanted to show you the diff difference between um, my first compounding step and the second compounding step. So this would be my second, okay, the second time I compounded, basically the same way I showed you guys. And then this was the first, I haven't done the second one over here yet. So you can see the difference between that and that. Hopefully it comes through between that and then that. That second compound, that's still the first. So I still gotta go back, finish that um, with the second st step, and then um, we'll do the third step. And the third step, we're gonna do a little bit different, so I'll come back and show you how I do that before we move on to the, the next compound. Okay, so we've done the second step on the entire bottom piece here okay looks pretty good but we're still not there yet okay we're, we're still not there we still see some tiny scratches so for the last for the third time compounding we're gonna do a little bit different we're gonna do less compound and a higher RPM okay so it's gonna be more of a buffing more of a uh, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but this is what works for me. Uh, when I increase the RPM, I use a little less compound and it kind of just uses what's already in the pad, okay? I wet it a little bit, um, just add a little bit of compound and um, just give it maybe another 1000 RPM. So if we're running at 1500 RPM, I switch it to like 2500 RPM and um, with a little less pressure, okay? With the, the first step, I like to put a little pressure on it to really kind of bite in there. Um, the last one, I don't. I like to alleviate the pressure and speed it up. So then we're just cutting the top of you know the uh, scratches off. And then it really comes out real nice. So let me do that. I'll put you on the tripod again. And um, we'll get that step done and then uh, move on. Oh, and in this one here, that I'm, like I said, I just put a little bit of compound on there. And in this step, I'm gonna do the whole panel. Okay, I don't have to do it in sections because I'm gonna go really fast uh, with, a, with a higher speed. So uh, we'll just kind of wet it just a little bit. This is more of a, you don't need it that wet, okay? That's actually a little bit too wet, I edit, but that's okay. It'll just take a little longer to dry out, but. Um, okay. So we'll kick it up to, that's what speed I was running. So we'll kick it up about right there.
Okay, so um, we went pretty quick with that, and uh, let's see what it looks like. We may have to do this again. I don't know. We'll see. Actually looks really good. See how it's starting to look. <clears throat> you can hardly see the, the uh, scratches at all. But I think I'm going to do it again. So this is one of those things where don't, don't rush it. Don't try to be like, oh, I compounded it and it's just not looking right. Just keep doing it. Keep doing the same thing over and over again. And it's going to come out like, like glass. So I'm going to wipe this off and um, we'll do it again. One thing you don't, when you're doing it with the, when you got the buffer moving fast and, um, you know, it's, if it starts to dry out, it's going to start skipping. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it starts like skipping along. You want to stop. You don't want it to do that because then it's going to overheat. Okay. You're going to overheat your, uh, your panel and you could run into some other issues. So you don't want that to happen. It, maybe you could put a little more water onto it to keep it nice and even uniform. And, um, yeah, I, like I know there's different ways to do this. I know you could probably switch pads and then pick up all the compound with a fresh pad. Um, I just do it this way with a microfiber and it, it's always worked for me good. So that's the way I'm going to keep doing it. So alrighty then. So we're on to step two. Okay. So we got the, the black pad that goes with the, uh, step two polish. Okay. I'll kind of put all these part numbers so you guys can see and order it if you want it. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, get our distilled water Gonna kind of moisten it up a little bit. And it's pretty much the same thing as, oh, make sure you uh, shake these. And, um, oh, we could do it the same way. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as you get it spread out before you turn the buffer on. And that's pretty much to make it even and also it doesn't go flinging around the room and uh, get on the rest of everything else you got around you. So I'll put you guys back on here. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is, is when you're done with your first step, make sure you clean all the edges of, you know, so th this pad does not pick up anything from the first step. But anyway, um, we got our new microfiber here. And this one you can kind of leave on a little bit wet uh, and just kind of wipe it off. Uh, this is the same thing. I don't like to let it dry and like start hopping and burning. And, you know, I like to have a nice smooth finish like that so that it's easy to wipe off and um, you're not burning anything. Um, so you can see, I mean, it's like, literally amazing the way it looks so you can compare that i mean i don't know let me clean my lens here but i don't know if it comes through good on video but it is really really shiny it's like a mirror and this is still step one over here so you see the lights how they look a little bit hazy Compared to that, not so much. And that's the first step. That's the machine polish. So you can see the difference. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I may do this twice too. I don't know. This is a time consuming process. You know, don't try and rush through it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video that if you try to jump ahead, okay, before you get the, the finish looking really good on the first step, um, it's gonna come out like crap. I mean, this will start streaking. Uh, it won't like having to polish out really deep scratches. This is not what this is for, okay? That's just to basically bring out that real deep shine. So. starts to 
feel like glass after this step. It just starts to like, the microfiber just glides. Like, I, I mean, you can feel it just gliding on the surface. So you know you've, you're starting to really make it shine. So yeah, I'm gonna do it one more, one more time. This time I'm gonna put hardly any uh, compound on it, just wet it a little bit, kick up the speed again, and uh, go over the whole entire thing. And um, then uh, that should do it for compounding. Then we're gonna go to the wax, finish that, and that's it, we're done. So let me finish that up and I'll come back and we'll wrap this video up. All right guys, so last step, uh, I'm gonna use the uh, Meguiar's Cleaner Wax. And um, again, you wanna just, Discard that other uh, microfiber that you had compound on and just switch it to a brand new one that is only going to see wax. Okay, you just don't want to cross contaminate anything. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty simple. I mean, you do all this by hand. Uh, shake it up, put a little bit on. And this is really simple like no-brainer stuff you just wipe it on you can do it any way you want circles you could do it this way it doesn't really matter this stuff is uh pretty user friendly so so i just want to do a small spot to show you guys how it looks So, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't much get much better than that. It's crazy shiny. So anyway, guys, that's the steps I use. Uh, I'm sure there's other people that have videos that do it differently. Uh, this is what works for me, and these are the results I get. Okay? I mean, you can see me in the reflection like, like it's a mirror. So... Yeah, that's what I do. Oh, and remember I told you about don't worry about a little bit of orange peel in the corners. I mean, you can't even see it. I mean, if you look up really, really close, you can see it, but it's almost non-existent. So, you know, protect your edges. Don't, don't burn through. That's, that's a key. Um, but other than that, I mean, just take your time with it. And, you know, th this stuff's not cheap. It's, this is not a cheap system. The, uh, this, this kit and you know, like these compounds, this was like 60 bucks for this one. Um, the pads are, I think 10 or $15. The Trizact, like a 20 pack is like 60 bucks. And if you, they, they also have a, like a second stage Trizact, like a 3000 and a 5000 that helps you, uh, not have to compound as much. So. You know, you could do maybe, you know, you could do the Trizac 1500, then you could do the Trizac 3000, and then the Trizac 5000, and then compound one time. Okay, so I, you know, for me, I, I don't mind compounding two more times to, uh, to get the same result because those discs are very expensive. The, the, uh, the 3000 and the 5000, they're like 60 or $70 and you only get like 10 or 15 of them. And you can go through them pretty quick. So you could spend some money on, um, you know, the, the cutting and buffing process, but the, uh, the compound itself is, it, it goes a long way. You could, do a, you could do multiple cars with one bottle. So that's what I choose to do. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hope you learned something. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to try. Try an area on your car, like, like this, for instance. This is the door, so down here, it's very inconspicuous, especially when you're walking by the car. You're not going to see that down below, like that angle in. So try it on that. See how you do, you know, see what your results are. Uh, follow the steps I showed you and, the, you know, it'll come out like that. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. This was long, but I felt like it, it kind of needs to be to show all the steps and exactly how to do it. Because there's not, I mean, 3M has a couple videos out but they're not that comprehensive they're not that in depth in in telling you the details that i've told you so anyway guys that's gonna do it like share and subscribe check y'all later